Hey guys, welcome back to Demystified. For our big 10th episode, we're going to do something very special. Instead of looking forward, we'll be looking back at what is perhaps the penultimate transit plan which Toronto never completed. Go ALRT, or Go Alert, as I've heard others call it. I want to give a big shout out to all our supporters on Patreon for helping us make this video happen. Nick in particular, as well as our new patrons. If you're not already, consider following us on Instagram and Twitter for regular updates and consider supporting us on Patreon for early access to videos like this one. Now, let's get into it. Now, since this video is unique in its subject, some things will probably look a little bit different. Let's take a look at what Go ALRT was. Go ALRT was a regional rapid transit system proposed by the Davis government in the early 1980s. The planned network was conceived as a way of dealing with a growing region with congested highways, while also separating Go Transit's popular lakeshore route from the freight trains which Go shared space with at the time. Go Alert's north and south lines would share tracks on the western and eastern extents of Go's lakeshore corridor, which would be extended east from Pickering to Oshawa. The network would have been around 200 kilometers long. Interestingly, Go Alert would be formed with two lines, one running through the north of the region's core and one running along the south via the existing lakeshore rail line, which would be partially converted for operation as part of Go Alert. The northern line is probably the most interesting, as it was the only part of the Go Alert plan that isn't currently served by rail service today. The line would have split from the Lakeshore Line, likely somewhere near Oakville Go, before traveling northeast along what are now highway and utility corridors to reach Mississauga City Centre and Square One. From there, the line would head further northeast along the Finch Hydro Corridor. Original plans suggest a connection to Pearson International via a spur off of the Alert Main Line, evoking BART's connection to the San Francisco International Airport. However, it's entirely possible that a final version of the plan may have involved the diversion of the main line under Pearson, which is probably my preferred design. The line would then continue along the Finch Hydro Corridor to pass today's Finch West and Finch subway stations, before eventually dipping down to rejoin the Lakeshore East line east of the Toronto City limits in Pickering. Notably, plans are generous in showing the line's proximity to Scarborough Centre, despite the substantial distance between it and the Finch Hydro Corridor. All in all, despite using a hydro corridor for much of its northerly route, Go Alert essentially entirely traces and parallels current highway routes, be it the Gardner, QEW, 401, 403, 407, and others. The northerly route in particular is very interesting to me, as it's important to remember that places like North York Centre were by no means fully formed at the time of the plan's proposal. Hence, if Go Alert had been built, areas like North York and Scarborough Centre would look very different today as density might have moved north to follow the Finch Hydro Corridor rather than where it ended up along Highway 401 and the Shepherd Line, which would probably not exist if Go Alert had been built. Now, of course to interject, Go Alert was never built. When the Peterson government was elected in 1985, the plans were torn up. There were also issues which cropped up with the project's alignment into Hamilton, as well as the less than stellar impression which the Scarborough RT left people with when it opened. So let's talk about those vehicles. The vehicles proposed for Go Alert are just as interesting as the routes it would have served. Go Alert, to an extent, came out of Go's plans to electrify the system in the 1980s, something which we are just starting to get around to in 2020. Plans proposed included electric locomotive hauled bi-level trains, EMUs based on the Go bi-level design, or the Go Alert proposed options, ITCS-like vehicles which resemble those eventually put onto use on both the Scarborough RT and the Vancouver Skytrain which would have been essential as Go Alert's route would have involved substantial grades, allowing trains to duck under and pass over various highways and other existing infrastructure, as well as execute turns at speed, which would have been sharp for traditional trains, but which were made possible by ITCS's steerable bogey design, which is what enables the tight turns seen on sections of the Scarborough RT and Vancouver Skytrain. Much like the Vancouver Skytrain, Go Alert was originally proposed to be automated, this means that if Go Alert had been completed, it would still to this day be the world's longest automated metro system. And indeed, Go Alert would have been truly a regional metro, with peak frequencies proposed to be as high as every two minutes. Now, while there were a number of similarities between Go Alert's originally proposed trains and the Mark 1 trains, which were eventually put into use on both the Scarborough RT and the Vancouver Skytrain, the differences were many right from the beginning. Go Alert's trains included accordion articulation joints between the cars from the very beginning, 
planned to operate using traditional nonlinear motors and would be electrified via pantograph at 25 kV AC, a very forward-looking decision looking back. In addition, GoAlert's trains would top out at 120 km per hour, while trains operating on the other ITCS systems have an in-service maximum speed of 90 km per hour. Train lengths were set to be as long as 180 meters according to some documents, which again reminds me of systems like BART. Despite the initial similarities, GoAlert's trains evolved over time to resemble trains operating on BART and some of the other regional metros that were built in the US more and more. With new trains to be composed of two-car articulated merry pairs connected in trains of multiple sets with three doors per side per car, powered by pantographs and painted in Go's distinct green livery. However, this is demystified, so you should be expecting a more enlightened comparison. And I have just the thing. As it turns out, during the many years since Go Alert, the idea of a massive regional automated metro network has taken hold, and while BART and the Vancouver Skytrain are highly similar to Go Alert, it seems planners in another region may have unearthed the plans for GoAlert's massive automated regional metro network, changed a few details, and resurrected the plan in the form of a new system with a surprising number of similarities. Such a system would similarly use a wide variety of existing right-of-ways and convert a commuter line to form its backbone. It would also deploy overhead electrified automated metro trains, and this system would also deploy two car married pair metro cars, with three doors on each side and a distinctive green livery. I'm of course talking about the Montreal Rim, a project which honestly to this day feels eerily similar to GoAlert to me in a number of ways, most notably in its conversion of an existing commuter railroad to a new automated regional metro system but also in more specific ways, like the style of rolling stock to be used, the type of power collection, and yes, even the chosen color. Of course, as usual, I've left the cost to the end of the video. At a proposed cost of around 8 billion 2020 Canadian dollars, the Go Alert project seems right in line with a project like Montreal's Rim, given it didn't plan to involve too much tunneling. This price, while high, would have provided Toronto with an incredibly useful regional metro system, which I'd be incredibly grateful for today. I guess with time we'll see how the REM project in Montreal turns out, maybe Toronto will someday revive Alert. At least, one can hope. Now, I don't usually dabble in the world of fantasy transit maps, however given the incredible merit of an orbital line through North Toronto and much of the rest of the GTHA, I thought it would give it a shot. My proposed North GTHA express line would serve to replace the part of Go Alert which was never built, the Northern Corridor. I'd modify the central section to utilize the Shepherd Subway Tunnel, while extending the line both to the east and west, first in a tunnel under Shepherd Avenue, and then on new elevated guideways along various highway corridors. I'd suggest such a line use catenary and new rolling stock capable of higher speeds in the outer section of the line as well, as to maintain the express nature of the original alert plan once we reach the highway corridors. Stops would only be made at interchanges and major destinations. Trains would switch to Catenary at one station east and west of the existing Shepherd Line terminals, similar to Boston's Blue Line, enabling speeds of up to 140 km per hour. My planned North GTHA Express Line would extend east from Don Mills in a board tunnel to Agent Court, where a connection would be made underground with the existing Agent Court GO RER station. The line would then turn southeast and connect to the future Line 2 station at Scarborough Center. From here, the line would surface around the existing Scarborough RT maintenance facility and run elevated over Ellesmere Road until it reached a station at the University of Toronto Scarborough. From here, the line would turn north and then run along the 401 corridor to Pickerango RER station. For the western section, the line would continue west from Shepherd Young over a new Don River Bridge and then continue underground to Shepherd West on Line 1. The line would then turn south and travel underneath Downsview Airport before surfacing between Wilson Avenue and Billy Bishop Way. From here, the line would run elevated along the 401 corridor with a stop at the Humber River Hospital. At the eastern end of Highway 409, the line would return to the surface to run along the Kitchen Rail Corridor, stopping at a new interchange at Woodbine Go RER Station. The line would then descend into a 5km board tunnel, which would pass underneath Toronto Pearson International Airport, to provide a station connection to the airport's future consolidated transit terminal. From here, continuing south, the line would provide another interchange at Ronforth Station on Line 5 before servicing in the Finch Hydro Corridor. Then, the line would run elevated along the Finch Hydro Corridor before making a stop at the Square 1 Transit Terminal, where the line would provide a transfer to the Here Ontario LRT. After departing Mississauga City Centre, the line would run elevated along Highway 403 until it reached its eastern terminus at Oakville Go RER Station. 
Such a line would likely cost $10 billion or greater, and would easily take 10 years to construct, but would provide a second high-quality east-west link across Greater Toronto, while adding a high-speed connection between Peel, YYZ, and Northern Toronto. So with that, thanks for watching the 10th episode of Demystified. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon or following us on social media. And as always, see you again soon.